Hello and welcome to this update to Hairstrand Designer. This is version 1.5. I've spent a good while working on some new updates and features to bring this more into a solid tool to make hairs. So without further ado, I'll just give you a rundown of what's new. We've got sing uh, single and multi strand mode, which will draw multi hairs per strand. That's basically the sprite that it uses to draw the strands. Changes between a single or uh, double or triple type strands and it can be good to help busy up the hair strands in total and you might want to use this or not. So that's there. Um, the normal map has now been updated which is based off the depth map so it does a depth pass and converts it into a normal map just like you would if you were generating a normal map from a grayscale image. Uh, there's some settings that have already been preset but in the future versions I'll give you some controls there. You can use the blur functionality to get a little bit more kind of softness from it and I think it's good enough. Um, there's a full override, override functionality per set so there's certain functions like the sliders that will now give you control for, with lots of things that I'll show you shortly. Um, optimization modes so that you can speed up the workflow a little bit, especially in older machines where it tends to lag. There's increased compatibility with older files. It may not always give you the results you want, but at least it won't always crash out. Now that tends to work for versions 1.39 and upwards, but I do recommend loading your files and resaving them with this version. Okay, there's full mixer control as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of those now. So you see the usual strands here, but they're kind of dotty sort of look because of the optimization. You can click on three modes here, so you've got fast mode, which will give you more frame rate, and it means it's going to be easier to use these sliders and see what's happening. So as I use the mouse wheel, I can use more strands to preview more. Same control as before, so you've got control mouse wheel to increase the definition, or you can use these presets, medium mode, slow mode. So slow mode just gives you an, a better idea how things are going to look. Fast mode just gives you it just enough so that you can start working without the lag. Now you can see a decrease in number of strands, but it stops when it gets to a certain number. That's because of the previewer. As you can see, it's only allowing to preview 14 out of 60 preview strands. Otherwise, it starts to lag a little bit. It costs quite a lot of GPU to, to make these strands in the first place. And that's something that could be improved in future versions now that a lot of things are in place. So, that's kind of what you're going to get there. Uh, you can play with the lens and everything's globalized until you press one of these numbers. As soon as you press one of these numbers, you're basically in a mode that's going to override settings here. Now there's a little gauge that shows you what set has been overrode and a little color dot there to show you what, what one it was. Now it's kind of just an added feature that you see these things that you, you can then see that spacing, length and strands have been changed within this set. But you can visually see that anyway. I thought it'd just be nice to add that. So when it comes to wave frequency, minimum, maximum, I didn't bother with these dots for these ones. I've just added this little wave in just to show that these can be varied on a per set basis. Um, these four here, these are just globalized, same with distance. They're things that just, you know, they're just quite generic, so you, they don't need a lot of control to them. Fading and thickness variation and things like that. So distance control just pushes them apart, as you know. Now a new thing that I've added is that you can simply move the strand around. So if you're on a particular set, you can just move it around put them in place. Another cool thing I've added is control with the mixer. So you can basically just click on this mixer one and you get a kind of overlay here of what the, the mixer pass look like. That might be an idea to go into fast mode for this just to help speed it up. So you can see all the strands, they've got a little bit of mixer one. That's why they're all getting distorted. But what you can do is just click this X here to come out. And what you can do is change the amount that each is affected. So I'm on set three and I can actually change how that one is affected to make it even more unique. 
You can see the numbers change to orange to show that they're overrides anyway. Uh, so you can change the number of strands in that particular set, the length of it, the spacing between each strand, the, with the waviness amount, minimum maximum of the waviness. Now it is quite a uniform sine wave that goes through here. So you might want to sort of be careful with that. Now if you want more distortion with it, use the variation. And that'll give you a bit more. Let's jump into medium mode just so we see that a bit better. We've got some thickness range. We can affect the root and the tip thickness. Now you want to push these apart if you want a thin tip and a thin root. Kind of like that. And get some thickness variance so that each strand uh, has different thicknesses to it and the fading. So everything's kind of the way it was before. If you click this again, it will come off the selection and it puts you back into global mode. So anything that doesn't have an override basically will have controls. You can see the things that have been overrode, they've been left alone and everything else that hasn't is still globalized, which I think is pretty cool. It works quite nicely. You've got your tapering in here, variation, and uh, we can put it in slow mode to get a rough idea how things are going to look. So this one looks a bit too sinuous and wavy. So I can go back to one and I can change that maximum frequency and bring that down a bit. Just to get it looking a bit more natural and something that I can actually use uh, as a hair card texture. You don't want it to be too crazy. You can actually play with the, the cards themselves. Um, so we've got that in play. You can generate a normal map now. The normal map is based off the depth map pass but you don't have to generate a depth map it just generates one in, inside of it and runs a shader through it so you end up with a really good normal map the normal map that existed before was kind of a hacked version of a normal map that just kind of looked like one but didn't really actually do the job so you can see this is how the normal map looks it might not be the way you want it to be but you can see some fine strands there. There'll be more controls added to this later. Uh, you guys can let me know if you prefer this over the old mode. But a lot of this is down to because the, the strands are really thick and they're all kind of bunched together. So there's that, there's a new uh, AO map. So we've got multi-strand mode here. Now what multi-strand does is it actually uses some extra fibers Let's just run a color map through this and let's have a look at preview first. So we're going to change the thicknesses. Let's just decrease the thickness range so we can actually see these a little bit better. Let's put it into medium mode. So you can see these are much finer hairs now. And let's just run these two maps with multi-strand mode on. So this is the, the new thing. I'll show you the difference between these two in a second. So it's going to generate around about 385. As you're using Hair Strand Designer, you want to just generate a few maps at a time. It tends to go a bit crazy with the memory and there's a memory leak that kind of stops it working after a few passes. So it's a good idea to get where you want and save your file. Okay, so just now we're at good point that. So you may want to just check your memory as you use it. Okay, so you can see with multi-strand mode, we get even more strands than the previewer shows us. So it's shown one, two, or three here, but when we look at this, we can see maybe an extra couple of strands. And that's really nice for making this look even more busy. As we look at the normal map, you can see it's much more strands there. You can click on this blur map. Now, as you hold down the button, it's going to blur it more. So you just want to give it a little tap just a couple of times. You might not see this in the video, but it's just gave it a nice blur. And that worked nice as a normal map. So once you've got something that you like, you just want to save your HSD file. And I'm just going to save that aside here. Demo. and all is good there you can come back and if you want to like restart so that you can regenerate all the maps that's a good idea 
uh, I can press F6 to reset the software, but it won't flush out the memory. So it's not always a good thing to do that. It's a good idea to restart it to get a fresh batch and everything. So I'll go ahead and I'll generate a couple other things just to see how it goes. Let's uh, click generate up here. This will take a little while. So you've got control of the mixers and offsets per set. You've got these little notches that show you what, what ones you've overrode. Also the colors will turn orange for anything, especially these ones, just so you can tell what's what. And um, yeah, just a few improvements here and there. Let's have a look at these. So we've got our ID map. See, your ID map doesn't really care about the thickness too much. Got color map, mask map, normal map, RGB for custom shaders such as uh, the stylized hair shader for Unreal, Unreal Engine or hair shader 2 and hair shader HDRP for Unity. Those are shaders that are on the stores. So we've got those and I'm just going to generate these other maps, hopefully without a crash. I'm pretty sure the memory's at its peak and we may actually get a little crash out here. Or we might be lucky. No, we're lucky. Okay, so we've got a depth, depth pass here. Got our flow map. Flow map is very subtle because most of the hairs are going down the way. You can actually change how the flow map works. You can make it flip X, flip Y, blue, or use a hue type functionality, which uh, uses uh, the 360 degree hue wheel to decide which way things are going. And that's good for any customized shaders you want to make. Okay, we've got ambient occlusion, which works a little bit different in this mode. As you can see, it's a little bit noisy, so we can just click that blur couple of times. And that looks fine. So if you go back into single strand mode, it will basically ask you to regenerate everything because that's the old school method of it's you using a single dot sprite to generate these. Uh, but everything's good to go. You know, you can change the spacing and all that up again. Let's go back into medium mode. You've got all your color control as before. There's a few new features planned for the color palette, as well as some other things to do with how these tones are varied between them. But a lot of that uh, is ideally shader driven in your actual real time application. So everything's good. Go ahead and click on any one of these to change those up. And that's pretty much for it for this video. Oh, also, one little thing I want to show you is when you load in an old HSD file or any HSD file, you now get the address showing up of where that belongs. So I thought that's pretty cool. And that's it for this version. I hope you enjoy using it. It's out now, so feel free to use it and let me know if there's any problems. Uh, it's still in beta and it'll be a while before it's out of beta. The, the plan is to get funding for Hair Strand Designer 2, which will completely be remade using Unreal Engine. This version was completely made in Game Maker, which is great for pixel type uh, rendering. And this is a completely custom renderer that I've created inside of this, as well as the algorithms and everything else. But I, I really want to use Niagara systems, particle systems inside Unreal Engine and take advantage of that. So. I have applied for an Epic Mega Grant and I hope to hear about that soon uh, and it will be made completely from scratch. It will involve a lot of work and it will be able to show you like a real time preview on a 3D mesh and there might be some other things that come into play from that. So big things. Uh, but otherwise, this is a perfectly cool little tool to use. I developed this on the wing of making a character and I really needed hair. And this basically was the way to solve it. And look how it's evolved in a year and a half. Thank you guys for all your support with this. 
feel free to suggest even more features for this version and I look forward to uh, hearing what you think about it and anything that you make, please share. Thanks for watching. Bye.